Mm, Lo-Fi Tano presents Letter from a Fan. Hi everyone, Anthony Fantano here, the internet's busiest music nerd. <sighs> Get a deep breath in. Get psyched! Because we got a good segment right here. A letter, a letter from a fan. Which I've just conveniently found on the floor. Hi everyone. Well, hello, Anthony Fantano. My name is Tommy Tarver, and I'm a big fan of the of the show. I'm a 15-year-old kid from Wisconsin, and I have a problem. Many of my friends listen to rap, just like me, but they only listen to rap that's on the radio, like Drake, 2 Chains, and Kid Ink. I mostly listen to more lyrical and experimental hip-hop, like Death Grips, Danny Brown, and Kendrick Lamar. Since I listen to artists like them, many of my friends refuse to let me play my music around them because they are too boring and unpopular. I was wondering if you could help convince them that these rappers are worth listening to. Thank you, Tommy Tarver, sent from my iPhone. Tommy, listen. You gotta listen to me, Tommy. It's not that big a deal. It's not that big a deal. For a few different reasons. One, are these people really your friends? You're 15 now, you're in high school, you're gonna find out when you're in college, when you're out of college, when you've got a career, or you're homeless. How many people who you were friends with in high school you were only really friends with because you saw them like five times a day? You know, ain't that serious. But I was turned on to underground experimental music in high school. If there is a point in life to be turned on to that type of music, uh, I feel like this is, the, this is the age range, you know? However, some people are just never going to be into obscure, abrasive shit, possibly because they have that mentality that they're thinking that, Oh, well, if it's not popular, then how can it be good? And, you know, honestly, uh, just make a list of things that are or were really popular that are obviously really shitty and hand that to them and just be like, see, that mentality sucks. But still, you know, some people have a certain kind of taste and they want to hear a certain kind of thing. They want to hear feel good, blissful, happy, upbeat music that signifies a good time. Um, Death Grips does not do that. You know, Death Grips is not fucking party music. Death Grips, as, as much as I love Death Grips, you're not going to find many people who loves... Death Grips more than I. Um, it's it's not something I would I would hang out with like ten of my friends and be like, hey guys, you hear the new Death Grips? Spam. Um, no, you know, um, <laughs> we're we're partying, we're hanging out, we're uh, we're trying to chill, we're trying to relax. I'm not trying to you know get them into. I've always known. I've always known. Ooh, I've always known. I've always known. Fuck, fuck me. Fuck, fuck me. You know, I'm not, I'm not trying to do that. You need to realize how far apart on the ideological and the sonic spectrum you guys truly are. If they're listening to Kid Ink on the radio and they really love the new Kid Ink record, even though it's a generic pop rap garbage, they really love the new Kid Ink record, and you're listening to Death Grips. Yeah, you guys are both listening to hip-hop in theory. But beyond that... Uh, <laughs> there's not much common ground. You know, imagine it's 1984, and last year, Quiet Riot dropped, uh, their really huge hit single, their cover of, uh, Slade's Come on, feel the noise! It's blasting all over the radio. People love it. They think it's awesome. Your friends drive up in the car. You know, they're, they're all sitting in there, like, and they're singing along. Come on! Girls, rock your boys, and it wow, wow, wow. And you, you know, you're walking up because you're gonna go hit uh, the bowling alley with your friends and chill or whatever the fuck they do in the '80s, cocaine. And you're like, "Yo, guys, hey, I just got the new Black Flag tape." My war. And your friends are like, "Oh, you know, I never heard of no Black Flag. What's that? You know, pop it in." My war! You're one of them! And your friends are like, Oh, hey dude. <laughs> hey son. Hey my friend. Pop that tape out. 
throw, throw it away. It's, you don't even have it anymore. It's in the garbage. Um, yeah, and you're just like there. But guys, I thought you liked rock music. Can we listen to the Black Flag too? And, you know, it's just, it's not like that. <laughs> it's not like that at all. You know, it, it's very far on different ends of the spectrum. Now, Danny Brown and Kendrick Lamar, you know, I could see you potentially turning them onto those artists. Show them some of Danny Brown's more trapified electro tracks that are all about MDMA of his last LP. Those songs are really catchy. Those songs a lot of people seem to like. And Kendrick Lamar, I mean, you know, they don't like backseat freestyle. They don't like uh, swimming pools. Uh, you know, those, those are pretty popular singles and, and have a really strong pop rap flair to them. Um, <clears throat> so, I mean, I don't, I don't see why they couldn't possibly dig those tracks. If you were to put them on like a, uh, do you guys even make mix CDs anymore? Maybe if you just sent your friends some MP3s and an email or just, you know, something, whatever, just, Hey, try this, you know, send them a YouTube link, whatever, you know, to try to turn them onto something. I, my experience, it's never really been, like, like when everybody's partying and in a social situation and hanging out, to me, that's never really been, like, an ideal time to be like, oh, hey, guys, ch check out this new band you've never heard of before. You'd, you know, unless you're, like, in a group of people who, they're all into weird shit, they're all into experimental shit, or something like that. To me, a social situation, everybody's, you know, really more concentrating on having a good time, talking with other people, socializing, not really thinking about trying to expand their minds musically. To me, that's something that, that, that is much best done when alone, when just chilling, when relaxing. And if you're going to turn your friends onto these artists, it's, it's maybe best to do it either in a one-on-one -on -one session or just to, you know, pass them some kind of album, some kind of record, some kind of song, whether the medium be physical or digital, and just have it, them listen to it at their leisure or whatever, you know? The thing is, you can bring a horse to water, but if they ain't drinking, they ain't drinking. You can't really do anything else than that, you know? You've, you've done as much uh, uh, that you possibly can, you know? If you show it to them, and they at least give it a shot, if they don't like it, they don't like it, you know? I mean, I know it kind of sucks now, maybe you're 15, and... You, you're really passionate about music, and you're really passionate about underground shit, and you love Death Grips, but none of your friends love Death Grips, and you don't got nobody to talk to about no Death Grips. That, <laughs> you know, um, you're, you're still young, you're in high school, I'm sure you're going to get a car one day, you're going to graduate high school, you're going to become an adult in several years, a legal adult, and you'll have the ability to go out and do what you want, when you want, and you can meet and fraternize with the kind of people that you want to meet and fraternize with, and you can hang out with others who share more, you know, like-minded musical tastes and whatnot. But, you know, until then, just, you know, be really chill, be really cool, don't try to force your music taste on anybody, and, uh, you know, you'll meet those pe people who you see more eye-to-eye -eye with in the future, when you gain more control over your life as an adult. Cool? Cool. All right. Anthony Fantano, turning friends onto underground music forever. <laughs>